Greetings, adventure. Welcome to the D20 Academy podcast. I'm Shiloh. And I'm Gabriel. And this week is episode 50, World Building Settlements. Hey, you guys. Um, sorry. We're not doing the wizard class spotlight today. We got mixed up. I got mixed up, actually. It's my fault. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I was, opened yeah, up the document as we were preparing today, and I was like, oh, this this isn't a wizard. Uh, no. No. Wizards live in settlements. True. Sometimes. Sometimes, they're hermits, you know. You be you, your wizard can be whatever you want it to be, honey. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just didn't look last time we recorded last week's episode. Um, next week... You're getting a call? Okay, it's your call. <laughs> I'll continue the introduction. Okay, so right now I'm going to be cutting off of Gabe's audio on his end uh, in, in post-production, so you're just hearing me right now. Hey, so, um... Yeah, so we're doing the uh, next part of our world-building series focused on settlements. Um, that's what we're doing today, which is, which is really cool. Um, so, settlements, kind of a big topic, we're going to be talking about a couple different things here. Uh, usually in these episodes we break them down into different little subtopics. So for this uh, episode we're doing leadership, then law, then human rights, then transportation, then trade and commerce, then business. That's a lot of stuff, and I don't actually know if we'll be able to get all of that uh, done. So, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens, <laughs> we'll try our best. Um, also, it's a uh, 50th episode, baby. Um, this is our 50th episode of the podcast. Hey, Gabe, welcome back from your call. How oh, was you? How was the 50th episode? Yeah. Uh, sorry about the interruption. That was just like the kids downstairs they said they need like water or something. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Where were we? Episode 50. No, no. Thank you for sticking yeah. with us. Yeah, guys. 50 episodes is kind of crazy. That's Half more than 49. Right. That's more than 49 episodes mm-hmm. that we've been doing this. Um, so that's really cool. And if you've been here since like the beginning, that's really dope that you've stuck with us. 50 episodes is a lot. You've listened to our voices like 50 times. That's a lot. That's more than I would. <laughs> okay, Gabe, you want to plug our stuff? All right, yes. You know the drill. Our Instagram, at t20 underscore academy. If you aren't following it by now, why? Uh, second, uh, we have a Discord. Message us on Instagram or comment on our posts regarding our Discord, and we'll get you into it. Uh, people are talking. There are people that exist and are talking in our Discord. It's pretty cool. Uh, that's nice. It's super we also cool. talk in our Discord. You can ask us questions, put down your comments, concerns, suggestions for the podcast, things like that. And... We have a YouTube channel that we are starting. Right now, it's just uh, being filled with uploads from our podcast. We're getting the uploads up there. But pretty soon, we have some ideas that are going to be going up exclusively on the YouTube channel. So you can look out there for some new content. Uh, yeah, else before that's we get just into called this. D20 Academy, by the way. That oh, yes. Yes. Um, and uh, yeah, sorry. We've been talking about like we're going to upload stuff on the YouTube. It's just and we haven't. We've been talking about it for a couple weeks now. It's just because I don't want any new uh, videos to be drowned out by reposts of old podcast episodes. Because right now I'm still just trying to re-upload all the podcast episodes onto the YouTube. So after I finish, well, after we're caught up with podcast episodes, I'm trying to do like three or three, uh, two to three a day. Then I'll start uploading. Uh, we'll start uploading the actual YouTube video, uh, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, also, you want to talk about what you're doing on Discord? Yes. So this is a new series that I've started on Discord. It is a weekly series of homebrew reviews it's called homebrew highlight you know get a little you know alliteration there it's nice hey hey Hey. um so basically i pick a piece of homebrew whether it be a subclass magic item uh slight change in the rules of DD, some small or minor uh part of homebrew and i Review it, put down my thoughts, explain what it does, what it changes, and how you can implement it into your games. Um, and then we can talk about it afterwards. Yeah, so and then last... every month I'm going to hold a survey 
on what you guys want to see, uh, which homebrew, which homebrew class you'd like me to review, and every month I will pick the uh, class with the most uh, votes. I guess. Votes, yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. And do a more long scale breakdown of a class and its you know place in D and D and give a big hero review of that. Yeah, last Thursday was really cool. It was really fun. We had a good discussion with with uh, people in the Discord, and it was really cool. Yeah. So if you want to join in on those conversations, go ahead and get in our Discord, baby. And you can do that like by a literally anything. DMing us on Instagram, commenting on, on one of our YouTube videos, like whatever. Smoke signals, like literally anything will work at this point. Just get in there, yeah, no, just please. like a ASL. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's get into the episode. Welcome to episode fifty. Voting Chapter 1, Leadership. Alright. Thanks, Cortana. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully I won't go crazy and try and destroy things. Alright, Leadership. <laughs> this is where we talk about politics and government, which is everyone's hey guys, you know, favorite thing. Yeah. Topic to talk about. You mm -hmm. guys know, if you're ever at a party, this is certified D20 Academy advice. Yeah. You're ever at a party, you're meeting new people, first thing you bring up, politics. Second thing, money and finance. Mm hmm Yeah, it's... And then what's the third most popular conversation topic? Religion. Mm hmm There we go. Bring all three of those the up big when three, you meet new people. Actually, yeah. Yeah. It's, it works that's, that's perfectly as, you, you know, a small talk, as pickup line, you know, you're at that party, you see someone you find yeah. attractive, you walk up, like, hey, you want to talk about the Roman Senate? No, um, no, we're kidding. Don't ever talk about politics first. Just kidding, I don't care. <laughs> Whatever the heck you want. Well, we're talking about politics right now in regards to world building. All the political science majors just like, uh, uh, I don't know. Okay. Uh, so, let's start. Basically, the first thing you want to decide is what is your form of government? Mm -hmm. Like, is it a monarchy, republic, empire, theocracy, uh... Do people just, like, throw sticks and stones at each other until one wins, and that's the person who leads? Yeah. yeah. Which is okay. probably leading towards a monarchy, or... <laughs> um, you know, if you are someone who plays D&D &D and you have the Dungeon Master's Guide, there's a great little list in there of, like, 12 different, maybe even more than that, forms of government, real quick, uh, that they just mentioned in there. And that's really good. It goes over basically all the, all the ones you need to know about. Monarchy, Republic, Theocracy, Oligarchy, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, but basically, the form of government is really important to a settlement, to a... Uh, right, and settlement can refer to village, town, city, right? Yeah. Um, I guess also kind of like a nation in a way, um, but we're talking more about like actual place, location where people live. Mm -hmm. um, with like buildings and stuff. And I think it's important because it dictates a lot of things that go on inside of that settlement. Like, what kind of leadership it has dictates, like, you know, how, like, strict, like, laws can be. How the people, like, view uh, those who are above them, you know, higher in power. Like, how just, like, everyday life is lived. How commerce works in that settlement. There's a lot of things that go into like, a settlement that leadership has, like, an impact on. Yeah. Um, for sure. Like, classic medieval, that's, like, feudalism. Um, that's how the government worked. Um, back in medieval times, which most, like, w you know, Western medieval fantasy kind of things are based off of. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was, like, monarchy, technically, but, like, mainly it was feudalism where the vassals on the land, and they pay the landlords, and then they, in exchange they get an army to protect them or whatever. Um, and theocracy is like, uh, is that ruled by a uh, religion? I believe theocracy yeah. means that it's ruled by religion or like a church. Um, and like oligarchy is like ruled by like yeah, the yeah. higher class, um, and and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Monarchy obviously ruled by a king or queen or an or an emperor or whatever. Yeah. 
There's nothing that's going to make you uh, question what you know more than having to state it to other people. Because, like, I yes. think theocracy means that. Let me go search it up. I'm scared. <laughs> um, but, no, this is important. Also, like, if you, like, have nations, right, mm -hmm. each nation probably has different settlements under its control, like, in its region or whatever. And how do those different, like, settlements or whatever, like, how are those ruled? Yeah, um, like a do they have, like, like mayors? Like, do they have, like, yeah. clan leaders? Like, this is some sort of, yeah, exactly. like, government that is put in place by an overarching leadership yeah. through that land? Or is it just everything is under that main leadership and they pass out rules from there? Like, these, like, small yeah. little things can make, like, a difference in, when you're trying to, like, build, uh, like, adventures and campaigns built around, like, you know, political intrigue. And if players want yeah. to gain more power in the kingdom politically and over people, then you have to detail these things out so that they have something to go off of. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's a little trick I have for you. If you make a settlement, have democracy as the form of government, it immediately becomes the best settlement <laughs> in the whole game. And your players immediately want to live there and make it their home base and they love it, okay? So if you want a town to be loved by your players, make it a democracy. <laughs> because nothing in no D&D &D campaign ever is a democracy. And if they ever see that little shred of light, they're like, oh my gosh. Okay. Also, <laughs> but that's not the best form of government. You know the best form of government? Anarchy. That's the best. And the most interesting. Anarchy means there is no form of government. <laughs> not necessarily that there's chaos, but that there's no... Uh, like official governmental power. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. What are the responsibilities of the government? Like, how far does the government sphere of influence spread? This is something that can change based on what form of government uh, the settlement has, like what problems the settlement runs into. There's a lot of things that tie into this, but you're basically asking yourself, given like the situation. How much responsibility and power does the government have? You know, does it like yep. regulate everything that the public does? From you know, their magic, their religion, their trade. Is it more laid back and not influencing those things directly? Is it you know trusting more in its citizens to step up for themselves and defend their settlement against like outward like magical or monstrous forces or is it directly there giving a hand in fighting that yeah without getting into actual real world politics because we don't want to be canceled um no like but like this is, a, this is a, a question that is prevalent in like basically all nations right now in the world right what rights are given to citizens how much what, what should the government be responsible over mm -hmm. right it, it's, it's all that kind of thing um definitely in america right two different political parties have different opinions on how the government should treat things, what they should have control over what, and then what like the citizens or the states or whatever should have control over. Um, yeah. That, that's what we have to think about. Like does the government control everything like trade and travel and all that kind of thing? Or is it more like lax, laissez faire? How do you pronounce that? Laissez faire something. I have no you idea know, what you're Free market. Laissez, laissez faire. Uh, I'm looking it up. Laz, is How the hell do you pronounce it? <laughs> laissez faire. Laissez faire. Um, that's like uh, the government hands off, uh, and definitely in regards to economy. Um, gotcha. So that kind of thing. Also, um, is your government like America, where we for some reason feel the responsibility to quote unquote police the world? But also just because we want oil, without getting too deep into politics, uh, is there responsibilities that the government feels or that the people feel the government has that is outside of their current sphere of influence? Like, that could be a, a goal for the government. Like, perhaps like, oh, we feel like we need to go and do this or we want control over this aspect, which we don't currently yeah, yeah, have. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Like, we, we're kind of starting to see that a little bit now with this coronavirus epidemic. Oh, wait, do I, if we say that, do we get canceled? I don't know. No. Um, um, but with uh, this, this epidemic going on, um, obviously, um, 
the U.S., who is, like, you know, providing tons of food and all these outreach programs to all these third world countries and stuff, because our economy is starting, to, is starting to crash and stuff, we have to pull back from those. And now people in the third world countries are beginning to, you know, they're not getting connected to those programs now that are helping them, feeding them or giving them clothes or whatever um, that America had its hand in and stuff. And so, like, how is that also, um, you know, just like outside of the sphere, as Gabe was talking, just like even outside of your, your nation. We'll get into the your settlement's connection or nation's connection to other settlements in a, uh, later on in this episode. But that is something to think about as well. Do they have responsibilities or whatever that they're taking that's outside of their um, sphere? Yeah. Per se? Another important thing when it comes to leadership and government is how is it perceived by the people? You know, is it a government or leadership or leader that is well-liked and trusted and people believe in them? Or is there a lot of distrust and, like, tension in between the different political parties, different... Uh, classes in the world, like socioeconomical classes. I'm not like yeah. you know twelve D and D classes. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. There should be there should be a, a city where like your class is literally your class. That would be kind of interesting. Like there's twelve classes in every sense of that word. <laughs> Like, there's the bard class and the barbarian <laughs> class and all, everything. And they all have, like, different tensions and stuff. That'd be funny. Not really, actually. That'd be really weird. Um, It'd be quite weird, but also kind of funny. But, yeah. Actually, you could make that kind of cool. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah. How is the government how is perceived? The government perceived? You know, are they liked? Are they loved? Are they hated? Is there? Is, do some people love them? Do some people hate them? Mm-hmm. For example, does the government favor certain classes or whatever? So they like the government. Well, they like the bards. You know, but they don't like the barbarians as much. Yeah, you know. Um, <laughs> maybe the bards are the government. Probably. Mm, um, that's fair. But that's that's important. Um, and definitely, if you care about, um, there's just so many things that you can do with this kind of, these politics and how the government is perceived and stuff. You can, that's so many adventure seeds and stuff just right there. Yeah. Um, Because, like, you know, you go to a new settlement and people are like, dude, the government is corrupt and messed up and people are getting their freedom taken away or whatever. And the party can be hired to help tear down the government or fix the problems, seed out the corruption, Um, right? That's just tons of adventures right there. Or or even just, like, even deeper, just, like, straight political intrigue. Mm -hmm. There's traitors, there's spies, whatever. Um there's the different political parties are sabotaging each other or whatever to get followers. Like that's super interesting. And that's so many adventures and stuff just right there, just based off of how the government is perceived. Um, but not just how they're perceived, but also just like their actions and how they treat their people and, and all that kind of stuff as well. Right. Yeah. Um, that's so interesting. And I can keep a, a, a group of adventures in a, in a, in a settlement for a while while they're trying to help solve these problems. I think that's what George Lucas was going for in prequels. But it just didn't work. Sorry. Tangent. Hey, guys, welcome to the most controversial episode of the podcast. The prequels suck. We call out everything. We We call out all your favorite childhood movies, and we talk about politics. Okay, sort of moving away from politics. Let's get into (laughs) law. Law and Order Special Victims Crime Unit. I never said I don't know. I haven't seen that show before. SVU, Special Victims Unit. Special Victims Unit. Have you seen that show before? I've watched some of it. Law and Order? I've yeah. seen one episode. My, this is, okay, this is super tangent, but uh, when I was a freshman in high school, my biology teacher for a class, I went to a public school, by the way, we uh, watched an episode of Law and Order. That was it. That's what we did for class, for biology. It had nothing to do with biology. He just wanted to show us his favorite episode of Law and Order. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I'm not gonna name that. <laughs> I don't want him to get canceled because obviously he was a cool teacher because he showed us movies and uh, TV episodes. All right. Law. We're talking about law. Yes. <laughs> what is the rule of law in your world, in your settlement, in your kingdom that you're building? Like, what are the most important laws? What restrictions are there? Is it? Like a settlement where there are a ton of laws, laws for every single, every single thing that you're going to be doing in your everyday life. This is how you're supposed to do it. This is what you can and can't do. 
or is it like don't murder people whoa uh whoa don't steal hey um yeah so this kind of ties back to what we we're talking about earlier about like how the government treats law right like are they control of everything are they more laissez-faire um in regards to um those kinds of things i would suggest unless this settlement is extremely important to your story and the entire light campaign takes place here or a story if you're not running a DD campaign and you're just a storyteller or a writer um and everything like matters here then i say go into detail with your law and stuff otherwise you just need the basics i think what is in the um uh, explorer's guide to wild mount yeah they have exactly. these little little uh side boxes very short of the different laws in each of the two main kingdoms. And the punishments. No, I think actually, sorry, the three. The three main kingdoms. Yeah. Yep. The different crimes. Main, basic, like, b basic main crimes. Like, the things that the players and are going to commit, like, murder, theft, uh... Treason. Mm -hmm. Things like that. And then the punishment. Mm -hmm. And different places might have different punishments, right? Some might think murder is worse than other places... Some might think treason is worse than other places, right? Mm -hmm. um, some might be very lax on punishment, while some might like do the death, um, death punishment on like every single crime. So, but just you just have to, you can just do the basics. That's important. That matter to the to the the story or whatever. Yeah. Um, the thing, the basic things that people will ask, the players will ask about. Hey, how bad is theft here or murder here mm -hmm. or whatever? You don't need to get super in detail with this, like like. All right. Well, according to section A two o three, um, yeah. trade of the uh, uh, if a barbarian murders <laughs> a bard in fighter territory, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. What are the punishments? Legal yeah. processes. How are people tried? Yeah. Is there a court? Is there like a regional court? Is there like a national court? There are several different tiers of courts. Um, do people just go down to the like the court, like a uh, law enforcement? I can't like police station, yeah. but that's not the right word. Yeah, I'm police station. Sure, police right. station. Just like settle the differences. Is there a strict way that they have to go? Like, oh, this happens, so we have to go to court, or is there something that can be like settled outside? Uh, also, another thing to keep in mind when you're uh, structuring this is, is it fair? Yeah. Is it biased? Yeah. Because that's um, a big okay, thing so in GMs, law. GMs, if you're listening, this is going to be way more important than you think. Because like it or not, your players are going to break the law, and you're going to have to figure out what to do with them when they do that. And when they inevitably get, get caught by the city guard, what happens then? Because trust me, it's going to happen. And if you don't plan it out, it's going to be very hard for you to improv everything and make it sound reasonable and logical because trust me, this has happened to me before. Actually, recently. And they got caught and I didn't know what to do because it didn't say anywhere and I didn't plan it out. And guys, this is really important. No, um, no. But seriously, if your players commit a crime and they get caught, which I'm not saying as a GM... Like, honestly, let them get caught. Let them get punished for their crimes. Make it realistic or whatever. Mm -hmm. How does it work? <laughs> what? Are you speaking right now? Because I can't hear you. Or are you just... Never mind. mind. Okay. Are you talking about last session? We had a thing last session. <sighs> it, Boy. Random tangent that doesn't need to be said. Sorry. But yeah. Um, how does the legal process work in your world? How are people tried? Is yep. it a fair thing? Uh, again, you don't need to get into super intense detail with this is what the court eti etiquette is, blah, 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 yeah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Just detail the important things for when your player is going to break the law and get caught. Provided they don't yeah. kill like, all the city guard. Or also, like, you might want to have this plan so that they might ask, like, an NPC or whatever, so they can figure out how to frame a certain individual or whatever. Yeah. Um, based on how the legal system works. Or perhaps they're trying to prove someone's innocence, you know? There's a lot of, yeah, exactly. like, adventure hooks that you can build around, you know, someone being tried or punished for breaking the law. Yeah. 
Because honestly, like, urban adventures are sometimes even more fun than, like, wild adventures, like, in the forest or in the ocean or whatever. Like, I think urban adventures can be just as exciting and intense. Um, just things that take place within a settlement, in a village or a yeah. city or whatever. Like, trying to get someone framed. Maybe they're framed. Trying to prove someone's innocent. Trying to root out the corruption of the government. Like, all these things that we've been saying already. Hopefully this is kind of inspiring some things in, in, in you guys. Uh, not only figuring out in your world building but also in your adventures that you're making and the stories that you're telling yeah all right how's magic fit into the legal system good question gabe how does magic fit into the legal system i don't know you wrote the question <laughs> <laughs> no this is for you guys to figure out you know is magic banned is it accepted it's certain magic banned mm -hmm. like only divine magic rather than arcane or whatever or like is a I certain school of magic banned like perhaps enchantment is yeah, banned perhaps necromancy yeah perhaps necromancy is banned and enchantment is yeah banned, and illusion yeah probably stand out the most um yeah that's that's important or like how like even just like do magicians, just going back to like class ranking and stuff, do like magicians rank highly in the settlement? Mm -hmm. or do they rank lowly? Yeah, does the um, simple fact that they can wield actually, magic mean that they are valued more and viewed as higher? Yeah. One thing I just thought of actually was how does magic literally fit into the legal system in the sense that the legal processes and stuff? Mm -hmm. Do they do have a like zone of truth? Are they the court? Do they have, yeah. yeah, do they have zone of truth and stuff? Yeah, 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 yeah. Are the policemen like, do they use scrying to track down? Dude, do they use divination spells to find out where crimes are going to happen before they happen? Or yeah, I like things like that then, because it makes yeah. sense Like for a world. Like if you're playing in a high fantasy world, it makes sense that the, the law enforcement and the legal system would obviously have systems in place built around using the magic that they have. Yeah. Like, for example, not like Skyrim, um, <laughs> where when you get put into jail, you can still do magic. <laughs> like, bro, what? <laughs> You can still summon your flame and rickadons, whatever they're called, and then, like, you can summon a sword. You can f heal yourself. You can freeze people. Like, what the heck? <laughs> but, like, that's things to think about, right? Yeah. In the case, in the obvious case that your players break the law, like I said, and they get put into prison, are there special cuffs that have to be put on magic wielders to keep them from casting spells or whatever? Mm -hmm. Like, people aren't stupid, and if your world has magic in it, you know, and it's not, like, super rare or whatever... What's like most D and D worlds, right? Um, then you would have, a, then places would have a system where they can deal with yeah. spellcasters, right? And and it's it takes you out of the narrative and takes you out of the immersion, as as a player, when like you're a spellcaster and you're put into prison, you're like okay, I cast move Earth on the wall, and then when you just escape out the wall, yeah. like you know, like there should be stuff put into place and it, and it fits more. Yeah, a good thing to remember with all these things we're listing and talking about in this episode and all the other world building episodes is a lot of it serves to make sure that during your campaign in your story nothing breaks the illusion you know nothing like breaks the like uh uh that's what i'm thinking of Suspen suspension of disbelief you know like yeah you want to make sure that everything fits within the logic of your world you know if there's magic that yeah. is prevalent in the land, there are going to be things meant to contain said magic users, you know? If there's magic mm -hmm. in the land, then people in law enforcement are going to be using that magic to track down the people they're trying to track down and detain the people they're trying to, to, to track down, you know? Yeah. It's just about yeah, following the logic of the world. Yeah. Okay, real quick. I had an idea. You can totally steal this. Back when I was saying, like, how the police could, like, use divination magic to see a crime before it happens. What if the corruption in the police thing is that they're doing that to frame people? Like, using our divination magic, we saw you commit this crime, so we're going to apprehend you before it happens, even though you didn't, they weren't actually going to do it. And there could be corruption there, and that's how they get rid of their enemies. Okay. That's cool. I was taking that idea in a totally different route, where it's, like, uh... Like, a problem with, like, people who are, like... Uh, Things like predestination or whatever, like, like seeing far into the future. So, you're like, okay, let's just, uh, let's just jail this person now. 
even though they haven't mm. committed a crime or anything, you know? Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's super interesting. Like, if there's, like, a settlement just built around, like, the government, like, has all this divination magic and stuff, but there's just, like, a ton of corruption. And and then you can bring in, like, the, even, like, the deeper, like, questions about, like, can, like, free will, like, yeah. people change, or whatever. That's really deep, but like, guess... that'd be interesting. That sounds super interesting to me. Yeah, a lot of, like, things when you're talking about, like, law and, like, law enforcement, these great ways to implement deeper and darker aspects into a campaign of yeah, for sure. political corruption, of, you know, dealing with, like, racism in the community, dealing with, you know... Classism. Yeah. yeah. That would, I don't know if that's a real word. Yes, but, yes, you know, yes, yes. Against it just classes. cut out a bit of the first. Like, I didn't hear the C. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like... You're like, what's assism? <laughs> okay. Okay, so next we're going to talk about Human rights. This ties into what we were just really kind of talking yes. about. Obviously, this is a fantasy world. Maybe. Maybe you're building a sci-fi world. I don't know. But we're kind of talking about fantasy worlds right now. So human is a loose term. Mm -hmm. We're talking about people. Uh, just but intelligent just beings. But people rights don't like flow off the tongue as well as human rights. Yeah. So. Um, but human rights doesn't just refer to humans. Elves. Dwarves. Mm -hmm. You know, Gamorians. Whatever. Sentient beings. All right. Do people have intrins intrinsic rights in your settlement, in your world that you're building? Are there things that are like universally in this kingdom, universally considered to be an intrinsic human right? Like we have the right to representation. You have the right to, you know, not incriminate yourself. I'm just thinking of the Constitution. Suffrage amendments, for example. Fridge. Yeah. Suffrage. Suffrage. <laughs> You say it's a fridge? Yeah. To a fridge. That's Everybody all I heard. Like, just fridge. the intrinsic <laughs> right to a refrigerator. Now, that is an interesting settlement. Boom. The amount of stories and adventures you can do with that. Gosh, darn. Entire adventure. No, First okay, 20th okay, okay, level. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Two things came into my mind. One, mimic disguising itself as a fridge. And it eats people who reach into the fridge to get some food. Okay? First of all, awesome. Second idea. You know that joke you made as a kid where you'd call people and you go, is your refrigerator running? And they go, yeah. Well, then you better go catch uh, it. Yeah. But it's magic. We're in a magic world. So these refrigerators can actually have legs. And one of the quests is chasing down a refrigerator who's running away <laughs> from its abusive owners. I think we combine the two. We're to mimic refrigerator. And people use mimics as refrigerators. But this mimic refrigerator is running away. <laughs> he wants freedom. But then, that, but no, but then tying back to this, do mimics have rights? <laughs> Instead of just being enslaved by humanity. Okay, this is getting really weird. Yeah. But yes, you know, for example, in the United States, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is written in the. Uh, I'm gonna sound like such an idiot here. Is it the Declaration of Independence or the Constitution? I don't know. I'm so dumb, you guys. Yes. Bill of Rights. I have no idea. The Bill of Rights is the first ten amendments of the Constitution. All men are created equal. The Declaration. Declaration of Independence. Yeah. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that among these are life- Except and people who are okay. the same skin color as us. Sorry. Um. So, like, but, like, things like that, right? Like, you have freedom to whatever. Kind of we're talking about what we were talking about earlier also in the government. But, like, also different groups of people. Right? Mm -hmm. Not to get into racism because that's a, kind of an intense topic. I don't know. You want to make sure before you bring in stuff like that, like, if your group is comfortable. And if, like, whatever, if it fits your group, like, if yeah, you just want like to adventure around intense, and have fun in the world. Yeah. And maybe That's like a real intense problem in the real world that has lots of historical connotations and stuff like that. Um, however, most, like, fantasy worlds and stories kind of have it. Yeah. Honestly. Between, like, elves and, and dwarves, dwarves or whatever. And or, like, like look at, like, the movie Avatar by James Cameron. It's, like, all, you know. So, it depends. It depends on how, like, crazy you go with it. But, like, some people still be, like, dwarves discriminate against elves. Like, that's just how it is or whatever. And that's probably not too bad. But it is important, you know, if you want to get into 
deeper racial things. Yeah. Um. Um. You have anything else to say on that? Yeah. Um. Next thing being like, do certain groups or certain people have more rights? Uh, are they considered more valuable or more important in your world just for being that race? You know. Are elves considered yeah. higher than humans because they live longer and perhaps you know are yeah. more powerful or whatever? Is there a is there a tier system for races? A tier system? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A-tier. Sorry, this is the racist A-tier. hour. Um. Okay. Actually, you know what's funny? Hey, you guys, if you are gonna keep up with our YouTube. Uh, I'm, we're thinking of doing a. Uh, we're gonna do a tier list of like the different D and D races and classes, which that just reminded me of. Mm, okay. Um, not in that way. <laughs> <laughs> these races are superior to these races. I guess it doesn't really matter because they're fantasy races. But anyway, but we're gonna be doing that, which I'm excited for. Yeah. All right. We're doing a tier list. Another thing I want to tag on here. Uh, yeah. Is we're talking we're talking about like like human rights, like for you know, intelligent beings in your world. But another thing to keep in mind is that in the fantasy world, there's a lot more variety in m- monsters and other beings that live in the world. And I want to ask, like, what rights do they have? Like, are there, like, rights for monsters and, like, you know, proper, like, you know, ways to mainly dispose and kill of them like there are for animals in our world? You know? Like hunting rules. Yeah, are there hunting rules? Yeah, sure. Because animals do kind of have rights, at least in the West, like in regards to hunting rules and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, that's a good question. And definitely when it comes to like some of the more interesting and complex D&D monsters and stuff that are like, not people, and they're not like super intelligent, but like maybe they are pretty, yeah. you know what I mean? Like it gets the little like troglodytes and stuff. Like are they people? And that's an interesting thing to explore, actually. Don't shy away from that and try to make your players not think about that. Like, that's, like, an interesting thing that you can explore. Yeah, it can cause, like, an interesting thing, like, in the campaign where your players are perhaps hired by this private citizen to go and hunt down this monster or whatever, but then they, like, get in trouble in the law with it. There's a lot of things you can, like, tie in to your world and to your, like, adventures where they have to deal with, like, this moral and legal dispute, you know? Yeah. Well, like, orcs, I think, is such a good example. Because orcs are, like, monsters, but they're also, like, humanoids yeah. and people, even though they're not typically, like, in society. And so it's, like, is, like, three orc votes equal to the same as one person vote? Like, elf, human, dwarf vote or whatever? Or, like, things like that. Like, you know what I mean? This, whatever. This really is the racism hour. Yeah. Well. This is definitely the most mm. controversial episode. <laughs> okay. Transportation. Nice transition. Yep. Thanks. All right, we were there, um, and now we're here. How did we get there? Was it by horse? Was yeah. it by anti-gravity car? I don't know if that's like the most pertinent one. Uh, what? Did you teleport here? Yep, very important, actually. Did you walk here to listen to our did podcast? You... On the way here, while you were walking from A to I B, I don't know, Gondor to Rohan, <laughs> to all fifty episodes of our podcast. Because guess what? There's fifty episodes of our podcast. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. What's the main uh-huh. means of transportation in your world? Are there different means of transportation available to different classes in your world? Not. Again, not bards and barbarians. We mean <laughs> rich people. And you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But, like, yeah, how would you travel within a city? Are mm-hmm. there carriages? Are there gondolas? Um, and then transporting between cities. Are there, are there roads? Uh, I don't know why I said that in a weird voice. Are there roads? Are there roads, dude? dude? <laughs> bro, dude, you see that near road? city, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um... Okay. Yeah, are you like? No, but this is actually this is important. Hawaiians, you know, Shiloh and I, you know, you know, we're such. You know, obviously, you we're Hawaiians. You know, we have Hawaii. That definitely makes us Hawaiian, certainly. And we surf everywhere. You know. Yeah, yeah actually, in Hawaii, um, you surf to school. Mm-hmm. You surf to the bank, um, 
And sometimes, if you're lucky, though, if you're a rich family, you also you can ride dolphins. Yeah. It's a bit more expensive, though. Yeah. Um, but no crap, actually, you guys. That's what kids ask me when I moved here. I've lived in Hawaii for, like, a little over 10 years or so. I used to live on the uh, on the mainland in the Carolinas. And when I was moving, my friends, I was very young, and my friends were like, uh, so, like, do you guys, like, ride dolphins to school? <laughs> no, like, do you guys, like, surf to school? That's just, like, what? There are a lot of, like, dumb things I've heard, like, people think about Hawaii. Yeah, no, obviously we Someone tried to explain to my just... family what a slope was. Wait, what? A literal slope in the ground. Wait, what are you talking about? Someone tried to explain to my family what a slope was, because they didn't think we had slopes in Hawaii. <laughs> you mean, like, stuff to, like, snowboard down? No, like, literally just, like, the ground is in level. Flat. <laughs> it's slanted. Um, no, actually, hey, guys. Hawaii was actually made from volcanoes. So there's tons of craters and, like, mountains, you guys. That's how islands form. I don't know if you know this, but the ground is not even. It's not completely flat little land that just popped out of the ground like Minecraft. Anyway. Okay. All right. Weird. Mm-hmm. But transportation. Mm -hmm. Important. Yeah. Uh, if a player players are trying to, like, leave a city or move within a city... They might be able to ask, like, oh, like, how do we get there? Is there a teleportation uh, circle? Is there just a readily available uh, cart that we can rent or buy? Are there horses? Okay. Yeah. Is there magical... Let's talk about teleportation. Amtram. I don't we know. We need to talk about teleportation. Because this is, like, going to be the biggest plot hole in your campaign. Yeah. Unless you figure this out. Once you turn your campaign to a campaign centered around transportation, it's really going to go somewhere. Teleportation. Oh, that was good. That was good. That was good. Good job. Uh, you get to stay on the podcast. Um, no, but seriously, teleportation is the biggest plot hole to ever exist in D&D. True. Maybe. Teleportation like, breaks so many know. things in the world when teleportation exists. Yeah. So you have to figure out how it works and the boundaries and stuff, um, because because there are players, players out there that will try and like see like hmm, but teleportation exists, and they'll point out plot holes because of teleportation and try yeah. it and yeah. abuse teleportation. Yeah, so you you have to figure this out. Trust me. Um, I think like the most classic thing is like teleportation circles only. Yeah. Because, like, that means, like, there's just main ports that you can teleport to or whatever. But even then, it's like, well, then can armies just teleport into the other city? And now they're on the inside or whatever? Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot of plot holes you gotta think about. Do you have to approve people teleporting to your circle or whatever? Like, That's the thing with, like, it's, fantasy it's just, worlds. It's there are some things that we can talk about because we have, you know, actual history to pull from when dealing with different types of governments and laws yeah. and medieval time but then when you throw in magic and things there's so many things we don't have experience with that yeah we don't like, think of in our mind automatically because it doesn't exist in our world like you don't automatically think of like how teleportation affects commerce warfare you know travel there's a lot of things that it can affect and change and yeah it can essentially break how a world works. It can break the, the logic of yeah. the world when you realize that yeah. teleportation exists. Yeah, you just have to be very careful about teleportation is what we're saying, and just figure out the boundaries and lines and how it all works. Especially me, if you have players that, you know, yeah. are interested in gonna, trying to like, figure yeah. out more about the world and how to exploit things, like, m magically. Yeah. But, like, in our last D&D campaign... Like, teleportation is really helpful in the later levels just to fast travel. Because mm -hmm. they don't need to be traveling by foot everywhere. Like, that's cool in the beginning, and they're traveling through the mountains and, like, learning more about the world or whatever. Also, when later there's levels, things in the world that, get, like, give threat just... to the players at uh, lower levels, like, oh, yeah. like, we can run into bandits. Yeah. 
but yeah. like at later well, levels, just, like, it's like across, Skyrim, you know? Yeah, they, like, come, <laughs> yeah, come across like cool like villages or traders or whatever. Mm. But in the high levels, they're just trying to get stuff done, and they're completing these big, important quest lines and stuff. And they just want to fast travel, and it was just really useful for us just to be able to just teleport between these locations. Um, but also, then you have to start thinking like, why isn't everyone doing? It? And it just gets kind of crazy. Yeah. So you just. And we're going to get stuff. into more detail with a lot of these things when we talk about magic uh, in world building. Yeah, 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 our magic episode. There's, yeah, 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 yeah. As we're getting the taste of here, there's a lot of things to think about when you add magic to a world. A lot of things that magic changes. Yeah, for sure. So, just when you're building um, yeah, transportation, yeah. We'll talk one more thing about to think that, about. Yeah. Okay. How is information disseminated all over your world? Yeah. Are there magical uh, messengers, you know? Do people use the mess the sending spell? Do people use owls? Do people use, you know, runners? Yeah. Uh, it's our Paul Revere. Yes. Do they use Paul Revere? <laughs> um, also, by the way, you guys, that is a really cool adventure. I just thought of that. The Paul Revere concept. Wait, that's the right guy. The British are coming. The British are yeah, coming. Yeah, that's Paul yeah, Revere, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is like the plot of the movie 1917. What if the party has to be sent to warn people of like an army approaching or whatever, or to, like to mm -hmm. call off the attack or whatever? Um, that's actually really interesting. And I like that. I like that a lot. Like you're pressed for time. Yeah. You're speeding across the land. There can be all these encounters as they travel across the land. Honestly, watch the movie 1917. It's a masterpiece. Um, but, like, that's the plot of that one. He's trying to... The, the, the two guys are trying to get to the other place so they can warn the army not to make the attack because they're going into a trap. And they have to get there before they, the army launches the attack. Yeah. Now I'm just, like, thinking of, like, actual historical events that you can pull into campaigns as adventures or whole campaign ideas. Like, when you're talking about Paul Revere, I started thinking about, like, railroads. And, mm. like, when railroads are being built and things like that. And, like... Uh, before railroads were built to like, transport mail, like people were on horseback with. There's like this whole yep. book I read about that when I was younger. About like, the struggles that yep. messengers would come into and things like that. They can pull into your campaign. Sorry, so it's like super tangenty, but as you said no, multiple no, 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 times, but... actual history is a great source. No, seriously. To pull things seriously, from. Seriously, actual history is the best source for, uh, for, building, for world building. Earth. And Earth's history is the best source <laughs> of uh, inspiration and knowledge and world building. Yeah. To keep making things make sense and to clean up plot holes and also just for inspiration and stuff. But I mean, yeah, just like having like the players have to intercept a messenger to make sure a letter doesn't get to someone. Yeah. Or they have to be the messenger to, to get the letter to someone in, in wartime or whatever. Like it's so many cool things that can do with this, right? Um, You can have the letters in Harry Potter that scream at you. Um, that scream the message at you. Those are the best things ever. Um, I was going to say something. What was I going to say? It was really... Oh, about the railroads. Um, so that's a really cool concept into your world. Um, because railroads and roads completely change society. Mm -hmm. Just like how nations teleportation and stuff. Yeah. Like, in history and stuff, like, that completely changed everything. And we're going to talk about, I think we're, this is going to be our last subtopic for this episode, and we'll do a part two later on, because we still have so much more to talk about. Um, and I'm hungry, and I want to eat food. But cool. trade and commerce is what we're we'll talking about next, and we are going to talk about, like, that has to do with roads and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I want, I want to tell a little tangent story here. So recently, um, I love reading uh, fantasy novels, and I was reading a, a novel called The Highwayman by R.A. Salvatore, great writer. Uh, sick name. Writer. He wrote lots of, oh yeah, sick, sick name. By the way, uh, he wrote lots of very famous Forgotten Realms novels, like the Legend of Drizzt series. Um, anyway, so he has his own little world called. Okay, this is funny actually. The world is called Corona. And I actually read the book when this whole epidemic thing started. I was reading it. Um, anyway, so there's a standalone book called The Highwayman in his, in his world. The plot is. It's kind of like about this Robin Hood character. But a very subplot in it is, like, roads are being built between these nations. And this one, like, settlement, this one, like, fiefdom or whatever, is set, 
like exactly between these two other more powerful kingdoms. And now these were these roads are being built to now connect all these places. Like they had this location has to decide like who are they gonna side with? Who's gonna like give them protection and they give them crops in exchange or whatever? Because roads are being built and now you can just travel super easily between these places. And that was that's kind of like a subplot in the story. Is kind of the politics of that. Yeah. And that's interesting. That's super interesting. There's a lot of things that you can factor into when you're building a world. As we always say, like this might not necessarily be important to your world, but it's a great thing to lay down a foundation for a world. It's a great thing to lay down for a foundation for a an adventure. Transportation is actually something important they do need to detail somewhat, but it's also it's a great idea to build adventures and encounters off of. You know? Yeah. When you think of no, transportation, for sure, for sure. if they aren't teleporting everywhere, then you can think of what do they come across in their... Uh, walking across the world, you know? Do they come across uh, encounters with magical beings or bandits? Do they come across an exciting new unexplored part of the world, this hidden cave? Or do they come across this interesting village? There's so many things that you can pull into yeah. just yeah. how the players are walking across the world. Like, there's so many things yeah. that you can use to pull you know more interesting aspects into the world to view in just an everyday most, simple uh, things yeah yeah, yeah. one of the most uh classic D D like story hooks things usually to start a campaign is escorting mm. you have to escort a dude to this place or whatever like this is through all D D. this has been a thing what why are you laughing <laughs> I'll explain later. Might be a bit out of the topic of this uh, podcast. Okay. okay. But, like, seriously, I've played different versions of D&D, and a classic adventure it always starts with you escorting someone. I'm serious. This is so weird. I don't know why this is a classic D&D thing, but there's so many adventures that have start with escorting a car- caravan of things, escorting a noble to a place. Seriously. It's really weird. But use that. That has to do with transportation. But just, you know... Taking just this concept, right, human rights or transportation or the law or the the government of this place and just honestly just diving into that, you can just pull so much adventure hooks and stuff out of it, out of all these places. And Mm -hmm. yeah, so that's really cool. All right. Are you, uh, okay. No, no, no. (laughs) You can tell me after. I don't know what you're laughing at. (laughs) Um, I'm sorry. How information is. Probably listeners. Uh, I just like think of random things sometimes and i can't always say them so there might just be gabe is random he's i'm so pretty quirky random, you guys guys he's super quirky and so random anyway okay good anything else you want to say before we go to closing uh... <laughs> bro building is cool Alrighty, everyone. That was episode 50. It comes 50, after episode baby. 49. It comes before Let's episode go. 51. 50. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. Okay. Sorry. So, that was another episode on world building. I've been really enjoying this series. It's really interesting and fun to talk about. A lot of things you can... I think there's a lot of things that we've talked about that you can use in your campaigns and building your worlds. And it's just... A fun time to go in detail out all these small little things like transportation, and, you know, small little things like human rights. <laughs> <laughs> little things like government. You know. Just, you know, little things. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hope you guys have been enjoying the series, and we aren't done with it yet. We got a, at least one or two more here. Yeah, we got a part two this thing. Yeah, guys, we didn't get to everything. Ramble. A lot. So much. So much. We're in a part two settlements. Then we have magic, which, come on, let's be honest, probably going to have two parts as well. Um, and then, I think that's it. Yeah. For world building, maybe. You think so? Uh, yeah. I think so. That's really crazy. But we still have, we still, we still, we still got some. I think at the end of, a, after we finished, you know, talking about magic, we should do like an overview on world building. Everything that we've Yeah. Learned. 
Yeah. And just like okay. pointing out hey guys, things. Sorry. Yes. In closing. Yeah. Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, at. Excuse me. At D20 underscore Academy. Uh, DM us there if you want to get into our Discord because we also have a Discord. And this Thursday, we're going to be talking about some cool stuff, some new cool homebrew and things. And this would be a great place for me to talk about what I'm going to be reviewing if I had done it yet, which I have not. <laughs> but it will Don't be worry. done. <laughs> we're super ahead of schedule. We're really ahead of schedule. We have everything prepared. Super ahead of schedule, as you can guys probably know. Um, YouTube, obviously, we're going to finish up uploading all of our past episodes. And then obviously we're also going to be uploading every episode mm -hmm. that comes out as well. But also new YouTube cool stuff there. Like we're um, going to be guys. doing, uh, you know, D&D themed haul videos, you know? Great haul fun videos? haul. Yeah, it's like those videos like where they like buy stuff and then they like, show the things they buy. I don't know. I don't get it, but that, I know it's oh, 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 haul. Oh, yeah, I thought you were saying like H-A-L-L. -L. <laughs> I was like, what does that mean? Okay, We're gonna no, decorate yeah, a sure, hall sure. in our in our houses. D and D theme. Sure. Yeah. Um. What? Um. Hey, I had something else to say. Thursday. Thursday. We're also recording. Um. Our first session. Hey. By the time this episode comes out, uh, nothing has come out yet. But we have, it's all recorded and stuff. Later this week, an episode will be released. We've talked about it before. Mm -hmm. We're doing an actual play of the Unwelcome Spirits adventure in the Explorer's Guide to Wild Mount. Uh, book. We're doing an actual play series of that. We, we've done a session zero. It's going to be posted very soon. I've just been waiting for the right time. We're also be starting to record the actual episodes, though, now. Mm -hmm. soon. So those will also be coming out. Um, so look out for the session zero in a couple days um, after you're hearing this episode, I assume. And then you'll look out for also those other sessions. Uh, maybe weekly. We're not super sure yet. Once again, it's hard. To, there's five yeah. of us. Schedules all are hard. Places. Yeah. But, um, look out for those as well. Mm -hmm. Look out for them. It sounds like they're gonna hit them or something. Like, watch out! Make sure to duck. Yeah. Uh, what's next week's episode, baby? Exploration. So, that seems super vague. It's gonna be an episode talking about how to work together as players and dungeon masters to explore the world that you guys are creating and playing it. Yeah. Boom, baby. Just, just tips for players. Tips for GMs, all just has to do with exploration. It kind of has to do with world, the world as well, kind of what we were talking about today as well, which is cool. Mm -hmm. um, so look out for exploration, and then after that, the week after that, we'll be doing the class volley for wizard, you guys. Yes. It's going to happen. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, even someone on the Discord was like, when's the class volley for the wizard? And I was like, oh, it's just next week. That's not true. Not true. I'm sorry. Shao I'm sorry is a liar. He's I'm actually a pathological liar. Uh, don't trust anything he says. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you for listening to this mm -hmm. episode. Bye-bye.